Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be awesome. This one was a long time coming because U-Turn has had a very good thing going for a long time since they launched their Kickstarter back in 2012 and sort of the rest is history with their basic plus and custom turntable line. Well, guess what? Not too long ago, they came out with a premium turntable that they call the U-Turn Theory. And the U-Turn Theory is kind of a ground up new approach to what a thousand dollar turntable could be and should be. Now, as you know, we are an entry level channel. So thousand dollar turntables, that's not really our bread and butter. However, the beginner or entry level stuff is, and one of the best things about U-Turn is they make fantastic entry level products as well as mid and high level products. So what they did that was really exciting recently is they took some of the new elements from the theory and applied it back to the U-Turn Orbit series. So the U-Turn Orbit Basic, the Plus, and the Custom have now gotten a bit of a facelift, and it's not just a facelift, it's significant improvements. You're not gonna wanna miss this. A brand new U-turn turntable. So excited. Made in the USA. I love these things. I think they're fantastic. So yeah, this is new and improved. Let's check it out. This is the sort of entry level one. So we're going to have the MDF platter. We're not going to have a queuing lever. It does have the preamp. That was one thing that it does have. But besides that, this is pretty much the beginner one, which I want to specifically focus on because... This might be a great upgrade for folks that are looking to sort of take their turntable game to the next level. Let's go ahead and open it up. See what we got. Starts off with a nice little note here, apparently. We hope this brings new life to your music. Excellent. And I'm glad they have the layer of cardboard there. So if you use a knife to open up the top, like I just did, they give you several layers of uh, protection there. Well, I guess one layer and then and then you're, don't cut too deep, don't cut too deep, but it is good that there's some cardboard there. So this will be the platter. And again, they use an MDF platter. The only people I've ever seen use MDF as a platter material, but MDF is great because it's low resonance and that makes for a great material for a platter. So there it is, got good weight to it. It's not the heaviest one I've ever felt, but um, definitely doesn't feel light, so it feels proper. And this is one of the best first improvements that we're gonna notice, is they now have a groove on the side of the platter. And one of the gripes that people had had in the past was that it's a little difficult on the original U-turn orbits to thread the belt around the flat side of the platter. So now with a groove, that should help significantly. Okay, and it looks like we've got our slip mat here. Obviously you can upgrade this if you don't want this felt one that comes with it, but this is a good starting point. Black felt, and then by the way, as far as these go, this one does, I mean, it's not one of those rigid, cheap, stiff ones. It's got some oomph to it. It's pretty thick. Looks like about a three mil thickness. And let's go ahead and go down a level. And in here, we have some goodies. You can see that this is basically the uh, dust cover inverted here. And we have components enclosed here. Packaging is top notch, absolutely top notch. In fact, I don't remember it looking like this. So I'm guessing this is going to be new and improved packaging, perhaps. One thing. Uh, about these guys over here, guys and gals, is that they do continuously want to develop and improve. And that's an impression that I've gotten from them from the beginning. All right, we'll set this off to the side for now. I got this gorgeous, gorgeous blue one, as you can see down there in the box. All right, let me go ahead and get this out and situated and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so wrapped in plastic. This is also MDF. So MDF plinth 
and an MDF platter. Yeah, I don't think anybody else makes them like that. Let's go ahead and as gently as possible, remove that. That, my friends, is a thing of beauty. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, also uh, in the box, we showed it briefly earlier, but you obviously get a user manual. It does have a three-year warranty and really good support, which I think is important to have. They give you a U-turn sticker. I love stickers. And they give you the drive belt itself. So this drive belt is a single loop of silicone that was molded. So that is uh, a good thing, especially in conjunction with that groove we now have. And then they give you some solid audio cables as well. So as I said before, this new revamped version of this turntable incorporates some key elements from the theory, which is the $1,000 turntable, the premium turntable. The most notable one being this new tone arm. This is the OA3 magnesium tone arm. It's a solid piece of magnesium. Magnesium is great for sound damping. It's also lightweight and very, very strong. We have the OG inverted spindle that the U-turns are famous for. Watch this. That thing will just go and go for years. It's, it's a fantastic, fantastic spindle, and it is a belt-driven turntable. The basic still has this drive pulley with two slots on it, so when you want to change speeds, that's how you do it. You, you change the belt position from one notch to the other. On the Plus and the Custom, they've actually added an electronic uh, speed control switch, so if that's important to you, uh, consider that. That's something you might want to consider. Okay, to set up, we are going to simply place our platter right over the main bearing like that. Snug fit. And we're going to go ahead and put our slip mat on just like that. Now let's do a real world test of how easier, hopefully, it is to put on this belt now that we have that groove on the side of the, of the platter. Okay, this is a little harder to film, so it may not be the most graceful shot. So I am looking for the groove on the side, and I am gently stretching this into position. I think I got it, first try. Okay, yeah, that seems to have done the trick, and that was definitely easier, because I remember the very first time I tried doing this, especially with the acrylic platters, it, it would slip off, the belt would slip off, because it's a big belt, it's tubular, and it would sort of roll up and down the side of the platter. So having that notch really seems to have alleviated that. So yeah, that's all good. By the way, since we're back here, let's go ahead and see what we've got on the back side. We've got the power supply, we've got the RCA outputs, and the preamp switch. As I said, this one does have the preamp, which, um, I don't mind whatsoever. They have really good preamps. Not a whole lot to see on the bottom here. You can see this encapsulated piece here is the preamp on the units that don't have that. This is a much smaller piece right there. You've got the bottom of the main bearing. It's three feet. These are a rigid, probably silicone type of foot. They do have units with an upgraded ISO leveling foot, which is, is a good upgrade as well. But this is, again, the basic unit which, you know, for the price that they're asking, this is such a good turntable. I love these things. They're absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and put the dust cover on and see what it looks like all put together. That is sharp. I mean, that just looks so sharp. And they have the same hinges that they've always had on these. And if you're not used to those hinges, by the way, hello. If you're not used to those hinges, they may take a little getting used to it. They're a little different than a regular turntable dust cover hinge. Uh, because there's not really any resistance until it's in the upright position, then it holds it upright like that. So it, it may you may not be used to that. It may seem a little bit different, but it keeps the dust cover up and it you know provides uh, movement where it should be. Uh, there are no stops on the acrylic dust cover. That is a very thick and heavy acrylic dust cover. So it does add to the overall sort of mass of the turntable itself. When it's all put together, it's got a handsome weight to it. It feels quality. It feels like it's got a good, good weight. And that's pretty much the assembly and putting it all together. I want to take a look at a couple things before we test it out, uh, specifically this new tone arm.
Before we get to the tone arm though, I want to just take a moment to talk about this finish. It's got sort of this like texture to it. It's beautiful. It's like a powder coat. It is so gorgeous. I just love that it's not completely smooth. It's got a little bit of sort of a hammered uh, texture to it, which I think looks really, really good. It feels good as well. And the best part is this color, not a fingerprint magnet. So I, I do appreciate that, absolutely. Now going over here to the base of the tone arm, I want to talk about the gap that you see underneath the lift. The reason why there's a gap there is this one is not outfitted with the tone arm lift. That's optional and I may add that down the road because I have unsteady hands and it's kind of nice to be able to cue up a record with a um, cueing lever. So this one does not have it out of the gate. Very easy to add retroactively though. You can just slide it underneath and it goes to town. The main bearing um, is a very solid, well-engineered bearing. Absolutely a small footprint as well on the plinth. And let's go ahead and look at the kind of the back end of the tone arm itself. Okay, again, the tone arm is a single piece of magnesium. So this is, you know, the same piece as this. We do have a metal counterbalance back there, which is factory set. But as you can see, that is adjustable with a thumb screw if you were needing to make an adjustment, change the cartridge out. And we'll look at the cartridge here in a minute. But um, something else to consider is in addition to that counterweight being set at the factory, the anti-skate is set at the factory as well. I wanna look at the left there, you'll see the tone arm rest. It's this nice thick piece of rubber that accepts the tone arm in a very nice way. I don't know how else to say that, but usually tone arm rests like that are just a rigid plastic where this one is a soft rubber, and I, I think that's a, a smart idea. So for a head shell, it is formed to the tone arm. Not my favorite design. I do like a standard half inch mount shell where you can pull the head shell off completely, swap it out, all that good stuff. That being said, this is set at the factory, so at least you don't have to set it yourself. It's obviously adjustable. You can upgrade the cartridge itself. Speaking of the cartridge, that is an ATCN5625AL, and it's a step above a 3600. It is bonded. It is a uh, conical stylus, but a good quality stereo moving magnet cartridge. Uh, about a $30 cartridge on there. So definitely a good starting point for this turntable. It should sound fantastic. Good quality plugs and wires on the back as well. You'll notice that the cantilever is hard to see because it's black, meaning it is probably a carbon fiber one like its little brother, the 3600. All right, let's take a look at the platter wobble or hopefully lack thereof. The only way to start and stop this very manual turntable is with this on and off switch it doesn't matter where the tone arm is. So we can simply push this and it'll spin the platter. Don't be fooled by the ragged edge on top because that platter mat sits loosely. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. Let's go ahead and look at the platter itself. That is not bad. That is very minimal platter wobble. So I'm glad to see that. Okay, you guys know that having the ability to have perfect speed is paramount for me with a turntable. I like turntables with built-in strobes and the ability to adjust pitch, aka speed, right on the fly. This does not have that. This does not have that. So it's going to be very important that the speed is accurate. With a little caveat, you know, everything requires a burn-in period. So if there are minuscule, you know, imperfections in speed, I would expect those to normalize over time. So this is a, you know, complete fresh out of the box demo and test. So we got to keep that with a grain of salt. Uh, that being said, we're going to be looking right here, 45 RPM. How close is the speed accuracy out of the box? And wow, that's actually very, very, very impressive. Yeah, it's marching a little bit to the right. So that is a hair slow, but not bad at all. In fact, that would be imperceptible audibly. Okay, changing speeds on this thing is a great time to show you how to change speed. So I have to stop it and I have to gently move the belt to the other position. That's literally all there is to it. Let's go ahead and look at the 33 RPM. And 33 RPM looks really good. I'm gonna call that perfect. I am going to call the speed for both of these nearly perfect, definitely inaudible in their variance. So that's good, we've got good speed, consistency, 
accuracy, very, very important. By the way, the lighting looks a little different. I just got sick of the sunbeams coming in here, very, very sharp angle with the sun. So I closed the blinds and we're just on the studio lights right now. I want to reiterate something for those of you that aren't quite sure or maybe you know pretty new to turntables. By the way, welcome, glad you're here. And I've mentioned it a couple of times, but I wanna be crystal clear, this is a manual turntable. It does not do anything automatically. So if I move the tone arm over the record, not gonna start anything. The record's just gonna spin, spin, spin until you hit stop. The only way to start and stop this thing is right with this uh, start and stop switch, this on and off switch. There is no automatic stop, automatic anything. It just is a complete manual turntable. And for a lot of people, that's exactly what they want. All right, I'm just going to test the tracking force. Being that it is manual, it makes it very easy to test this because I don't have to worry about my gauge flying away, which actually does happen more often than not. So let me get the shot set up and we'll see how heavy this tracks. Tracking force is dictated by the cartridge. So, you know, we all, we've got this sort of message flying around on YouTube, especially that, you know, lighter is better, lighter is better. And while generally true, it depends on the cartridge. And some cartridges require a little bit more downforce. Okay, so I'll just start by turning it on. Seems like a good place to start. And it's zeroed out. And we're just going to gently place this here. And see what it's set at. This is set at one point, we'll call it 1.8 grams. There you go. So definitely a gentle tracking cartridge. Let's go ahead and test it in a different position. I usually test it right on the edge there. Let's test it, see if it's any different back here. About the same, 1.8, 1.8. All right, there you go. So the only thing left to do now is to give it a listen. Okay, it is time for a direct feed sound test. I'll be using the Enoch Light and Light Brigade Future Sound Shock but a song we haven't listened to. I don't even know if we've ever listened to the song, but let's go ahead and uh, if you got headphones, put them on. This is a direct feed sound test. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, final thoughts, no surprise, I love this thing, no surprise. It was just as wonderful as the previous offerings from U-Turn and I like the new tone arm, I like some of the new bells and whistles that they're rolling out. So two thumbs up on this, there'll be a link in the description down below. Would love to know your thoughts in the comments as always. Hope you enjoyed this show most importantly. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. As you can see, a beautiful turntable that sounds wonderful as well, as it should be, and the price is right too. If you're interested, link down below. But mostly, my friends, thank you for watching. Happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.